What's up guys and welcome back to another video from the Scalar Learning Channel. In this video, I am responding to the many, many, many requests for English videos for the SAT. So we're going to start a series now where I'm going to go through the practice tests and go through the reading sections and do my best to explain these sections. So this is the first passage from practice test one. And so what I would encourage you to do, I'm not going to read through the entire passage. I want you to pause the video, go ahead and read it in full carefully, and then come back and we're going to go through all the answers as I've already gone through and read it and answered all the choices. Now I'm going to explain how I arrived at every answer. All right, so question one, which choice best describes what happens in the passage? So again, this is a very general statement that's going to sum up this entire passage. And if you've already read it, now you know it takes place. By the way, this is helpful too, right? The setting is in 1920 in Japan, and it's sort of this story of this guy coming to give a marriage proposal to the directly he's a he's a young man he's giving the marriage pro proposal directly to the mother and they're also there's a class divide so the family that he's offering the proposal to has a has a higher status in in society the other interesting part about this is that and it's clearly indicated in the first par in the ch first short paragraph he's breaking tradition in doing this so normally you come to understand in the passage that you're supposed to go through your parents go through a, a mediator of sorts and he's not doing that he's breaking tradition so that's what this is all about so it says which of the which choice best describes what happens in the passage so let's talk about the ones that are wrong first one character argues with another character who intrudes on her home they're not really arguing He's basically just giving the proposal and she's listening. She may not buy into it, but I wouldn't characterize it as an argument. One character reminisces about choices she has made over the years. That's just not uh, uh, accurate. You know, and again, we're saying reminisce. It's like to think back. A lot of times, think back fondly on a memory. That's not what's happening here. One character criticizes another character for pursuing an unexpected course of action. There's a little bit of criticizing that happens but afterwards, after he leaves, in in a sense, but I wouldn't I wouldn't characterize the entire passage that way. B is just a much better answer. One character receives a surprising re request from another character, and that's kind of what's going down here. Question two: Which choice best describes the developmental pattern of the passage? So I chose a detailed depiction of a meaningful encounter, and again. That's really just spot on. That's what's happening. It's a meaningful encounter because it goes anti-tradition against the grain. A careful analysis of a traditional practice. This is not analyzing this practice of like marriage proposals back in 1920 in Japan. It's just not what's happening because it's, and again, it's off the beaten path. So it's not a traditional practice. A definitive response to a series of questions. It's really just one question right? He's saying, hey, uh, in the passage, he says, either you, I want her hand and we'll stay here and I'll marry her, or I'm going to go to America because I have a job opportunity to work as a dentist. So that's it. A cheerful recounting of an amusing anecdote. That, just completely wrong, right? So like a cheerful recounting, it's not exactly cheerful. And an amusing anecdote is, really means a funny story. Anecdote is like a story, basically. So that one's out. A detailed depiction of a meaningful encounter. This, of course, is a meaningful encounter because he's asking for marriage, number one. Number two, he's doing it in a atypical way uh, that's really counterculture at the time. So definitely B is the answer. These questions used in line one, we're talking about a definition. These are really, for number three, you really want to nail these points because all it requires you to do is go to line one and read it, go to line 53 and read it and, and try and understand. So again, Akira came directly breaking all tradition. What was that it? Had he followed form? Had he asked his mother to speak to his father to approach a go-between? would she have been more receptive? So now we can see directly, directly means not using his mother and father as a go-between, which basically means without mediation. Now, but let's of course go to 53 and reinforce that. I asked directly because the use of a go-between takes much time. So again, we're seeing that contrast against directly, right? Against directly and using a go-between so we can see that yes, this is without the go-between and that's uh, without the mediation. Frankly, confidently with precision, I mean, these can kind of work. They're just not taking into account the full context of the question. Which reaction does Akira most fear from Chi? So this one is a kind of interesting one because it also is connected with question five. Uh, because in question five, then you're asked to show the support for where you're getting question four. These are really great, great pairs of questions because you can almost double check your rationale. So let's say you make a choice in A. You can go through and be like, hey, do I actually find support in one of these four choices for it? If not, you might be like, okay, let me let me rethink this. So his biggest fear is that she will consider his proposal inappropriate. And let's go straight to lines 52 and 53 for that support. Uh, so it says here in 52, 
we have an understanding. Please don't judge my candidacy by the unseemliness of this proposal. I asked directly because the use of a go-between takes much time. So again, he's nervous that the way that he's approaching this, because he's not using a go-between, he's breaking the tradition, that she's going to think, hey, this is inappropriate. You you shouldn't be doing this. The only other one that I, I thought maybe se seemed like it makes sense is she will consider his unscheduled visit an imposition. But it's not really about the fact that he's just showing up without calling. That's the big imposition. It's not that. It's, of course, his bigger fear is that he's breaking tradition. And that's why he's worried that the proposal will be considered inappropriate. For number six, it says, in the passage, Akira addresses Chi with what? Okay, now we're talking about the way in which Akira is, in a general way, is, is approaching Chi. Remember, Chi is the elder. And I would definitely not say amusement. There's no amusement there. He's coming with a very serious proposal. Objectivity, but not complete impartiality. Ob objective, it's it just doesn't do... When we say somebody is objective, it's saying they're being open-minded and they're trying not to let their personal biases affect the way that they're approaching a situation. This is not about being objective. Affection, but not genuine love. I mean, that's just completely off, right? Like it, it's it's Chi's daughter that he has the affection or love for, not Chi. Respect, but not utter, utter deference. That is just such a, a perfect way to describe it because he is very respectful in a sense. He's worried that the proposal will be considered inappropriate and he, he's being very nice about it. But the reason why that not utter deference is there is because that explains the fact that He's not totally deferring to what she's saying, and also he's going counterculture. He's he's not going about things the proper, normal way. So that's why we would say he's not just straight up deferring to her. He he's asking for something in a non traditional way that wouldn't just say, "Hey, I'm going to defer to you." He's kind of he's asking for it. So that's why D would be the best answer. All right, for question seven, now it's going back to the very first paragraph, that short paragraph, three sentences. So obviously, if you're going to come to this question and you see it's on that, you got to reread it right away. So let's do that. Akira came directly, breaking all tradition. Was that it? Meaning, was that why maybe it didn't work out or you know something like that? Had he followed form, had he asked his mother to speak to his father to approach a go-between, would she have been more receptive? So in this case, the, describe a culture doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, criticize a tradition, again, not really criticizing it because he went against tradition and she kind of didn't go for it. So that wouldn't be criticizing the tradition. Now we can come to C and D. Maybe question a suggestion. The suggestion is to go with culture, but we're not really questioning that suggestion. What it's doing is it's looking at her reaction. What was her reaction? Hey, she wasn't fully receptive, Okay, and that's and now they're analyzing that reaction and saying, hey, what if he had followed form? What if he had followed tradition? So that's why D is our best choice here. Question eight, again, we're seeing this as used in line two. This should, and, and we're saying a, a definition question. This is really a, a, a gimme, a question that you don't want to miss. So we go back to it. Had he followed, so it says mo, um, form. Had he followed form, had he asked his mother to speak to his father to approach a go-between, would she have been more receptive? So again, I'm looking at that as like, as tradition, had he followed the tradition, okay? Which word is closest to tradition? Custom. Had he followed the traditional custom, and that's it. Number nine, why does Akira say his meeting with Chi is a matter of urgency? So in 24 through 25, Madame, forgive my disruption, but I come with a matter of urgency. So now this is one, hopefully, if you if you think back to the passage, why? Because he had just gotten that job offer, and he's got to figure out if he's going to go to America, and, and it's the 1920s, that's a big deal. So he has been offered an, an attractive job in another country. That's the urgency. That's why he broke tradition and came right away. And now again, we have this nice pairing where we're forced to give our justification. If we don't find the right justification, then we're in trouble. But if you go to 32 to, through 35, you can see it's clearly right. I don't want to trouble you. Normally, I would approach you more properly, but I've received word of a position. I have an opportunity to go to America as dentist for Seattle's Japanese community. Done. No question. And there it is. I hope you enjoyed this explanation of reading passage one for SAT practice test one. If you did enjoy it, please click that like button. And if you want to see more from the Scalar Learning channel, please click subscribe. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.